So let's go ahead and try that on a synthetic image. We'll make a very simple image um, that's all zeros and we'll put one edge point here at location um, 150 and I'll start a new um, script file Okay, so if I run that, I get this um, image with a single point right there. Okay, so here is, um, oh, then I'll go ahead and I'll paste this code in there. And I'll go ahead and run that. So that creates um, and displays this Huff parameter space. As you can see, um, it has a sinusoidal curve in it. Uh, and this again represents values of theta across the top from minus 90 to plus 89 and values of rho vertically here from minus d max to plus d max. So this is helpful um, to see how the um, matrix is uh, formed. Um, what we're going to do is draw the lines that are being voted for. So every time we get um, a line, a row theta, we'll draw that on the original image. And this is how it does that. We'll, we'll use MATLAB's uh, line function, but the line function requires two endpoints. It wants to draw from x1, y1 to x2, y2. So we have to convert our row theta representation to two endpoints. And the way we'll do that is by using the equation of a line like this and recognizing that um, A is just cosine of theta, B is sine of theta, and C is minus rho. And then what this code does, it tests to see if the line is mostly horizontal. If it is, we want to draw from basically um, the left side of the image to the right side and calculate the values of Y using this equation. If the line is mostly vertical, we'll draw from the top to the bottom and calculate the values of x according to this equation. So I'll go ahead and paste that in. And we'll put that right inside the innermost loop here. I'll just um, clean that up a bit. So. So basically, inside the innermost loop, it calculates rho and theta and draws the line and pauses. So what it's going to do now is draw the lines that are passing through that point. As you can see, um, here is the perpendicular vector here. Um, and it's drawing all these lines here. So. Um, for example, this is a theta of minus 1.8, so it's up here in a row of minus 64. And we can just keep doing that. So it goes through that innermost loop, votes for all those points, and we get that parameter array here. Okay. All right, let's try um, putting two points in the uh, parameter space and seeing what that looks like. So again, I'll let me now I'll just comment out um, these lines here that I don't want to see all the lines again, but I'll say um, I want to put one at 50 50 in addition to 150. 
and I'll go ahead and run that. So now I have, if you can see, two curves that intersect. And so this point of intersection, um, if I can zoom in on that, um, has uh, a two, has two votes, whereas the other points just have one vote or zero. So this point here um, represents the line that passes through these two points. So to find that out, um, we can simply um, take the coordinates of that, which is uh, 91, 333. So it has a theta index of 91, which actually means an angle of 0. It has a row index of 333, which is a uh, row value of 49. So um, basically, we have a point, these two points, we have a vertical line, namely a theta of 0, that passes through them, and the, the perpendicular distance is 49 from the initial starting point here. So it would be nice to find these peaks automatically instead of manually. We can do that by using um, a threshold. So we'll choose a threshold, in this case a threshold of 1, and use the expression h greater than threshold. So this returns true wherever h, that point of h is greater than the threshold. Then the find function returns the indices of all the points where we have a true or non-zero value. And those are returned in these arrays for uh, rows and columns. Um, and then we can go ahead and, and draw those corresponding lines. So I'll go ahead and uh, put that in here. So down at the bottom, we'll say um, well, I guess let me just copy it. It'd be easier. Okay, so there's my um, values. And then I'll copy this code, which um, draws the lines. And I said, uh, insert the lines, the, the instructions that cause, that draw the line corresponding to R and T. So that was this code up here. I'll just copy that and move it down. Um, I'll uncomment all of this, and again, I'll clean everything up. Okay, so now I've uh, computed the H array. I find points that are above a threshold, and I go ahead and draw the lines through them. Um, and let me move this out of here so we just display the image once. Uh, yeah, don't need the pause. Oops. Thresh. Oh, I forgot to use. I forgot to assign thresh. <laughs> so I know that I I need a very low threshold of one here. Okay, so it found the. Uh, the only peak in there corresponding to this line here, which was our vertical line, as we expect. Okay, let's do this example of um, this diamond. Um, so we'll actually have to perform edge detection before we uh, run the Huff space. Um, we want to perform the Huff the Huff transform on the edge image. So I'll go up here and um, change this code to be uh, to read in the diamond and then do uh, edge detection on that. Um, I'll need a bigger, 
uh, threshold. So uh, let me use, I don't know, say 10. Okay, so here is the edge detected image and uh, it found a lot of lines, as you can see. So I probably need to uh, increase my threshold, let's say, uh, I don't know, 30. Okay, so now I have a more reasonable number of, um, of lines. Um, in fact, I can tell you how many. Uh, looks like 23. So that's still a lot, though, right? Because uh, we really only wanted one line for each of these edges of the diamond instead of we're getting a whole bunch like this.